Jennifer, have you heard about the real estate market in the UK, in the US, in America? Ah. Some of these markets are quite lucrative to invest in. Oh. Huh. In fact, I know a few of my friends that own one, two, three houses. What are you waiting for? Maybe you want to think about it. Oh. But the thing I will warn you before you try it, there's some steps you must consider before you become a homeowner in the US or in the UK. Join us in Good Eve today, where we talk about seven steps to becoming a homeowner in the US or the UK. Hi everybody, my name is Buki and I'm here for the Good Eve channel. And today I'm going to be talking about seven steps to becoming a homeowner, US, UK edition. Now, while both markets are not exactly the same, and I know my brothers and sisters in the diaspora will say, how can you compare us to the America? How can you compare us to London or the UK? Let's calm down, calm down, calm down. This content is will help as a guide. It is not financial information. It is not real estate information. It is a guide that will help you to understand some of the options that are available to you, especially if you are looking to buy property abroad and you live in Nigeria or you are relocating to some of these markets because some people have newly moved to markets in the West. So why should you watch this video? You should watch this video because it will give you an understanding of some of the options that you can explore, of some of the critical steps you must not miss if you don't want to find yourself in a mess. And also because it will encourage you and inspire you to think about taking advantage to, of options and maybe financing that's available to you in the UK and in the US that can help you very quickly own not just one home, but potentially multiple homes. So before I get into the heart, the meat, talking to the meat of the video, I want to ask that you give me a thumbs up. Like this video. Am I not looking nice today? Like it just for that. But also like it because I feel that this content will be good for you and it will be helpful to you or someone you know. Now, because I'm giving you seven steps, you know what I'm going to ask for? Share this with seven people who may also be thinking about buying a home. Don't be the only rich person in your friendship group or share it with other people. They also should be able to benefit from this information. You should be able to help them. So don't be stingy, don't be wicked, don't keep this information to yourself. Share it with seven other people. And then finally, if you have not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Don't be left out. Get this content right as it comes out. See, today you're going to find out the critical steps you must not miss if you want to become a homeowner. So now straight to the video. The first step that you must take if you want to buy a home in these markets is you must do the research. It's so essential that you understand what homes cost and the types of homes that are available and the target areas you would like to live or own a property in. Some areas are in decline for different reasons. Some areas are on the rise for different reasons. Some areas are really good to own commercial real estate and some areas are really good to own residential real estate. So it's really important that you do your research, understand the market, understand the areas. Don't just buy a house because my friend lives in that area. That's a, a good point of to start from because that's also a part of the research, but it must go beyond that. You must do more. Also remember, unlike Nigeria where you may be living or maybe moving from, you are not as familiar with these markets. So even in the Nigerian market, there's certain research you might not need to do because you have what they would say you know, the advantage, a homegrown advantage, you know, have the homegrown knowledge. In these markets, take it that you're a novice, that you don't know, don't assume that somewhere that you've stayed just because you go on vacation <laughs> is a good place to live. I'm going to give you a small story to this point about research. I remember a few years ago, me and some friends were going to attend a wedding of a good friend of ours in our friendship group. Well, when our friends sent out all the potential hotels we could stay, and this was in the UK, I've been to the UK multiple times for many years. 
she gave us some options of hotels and they were kind of pricey the wedding was taking place in central london so they were really pricey places to stay and so i remember one of our friends you know who doesn't understand the concept of good value for money she just believes things should be cheap all the time me i don't play i don't take risks with that my friend knows the area she knows so i said okay what give me a list of hotels i looked at them i picked one in the middle range price and i paid my other friend was like no there are airbnbs everywhere i can get a cheaper hotel why should i pay this much for a hotel because it's chelsea it's too much money to pay and so what did my friend do <laughs> she booked a hotel online but because she had no knowledge of the area do you know that the hotel she booked was a brothel oh yes it was a brothel so when we went to you know you know when you go when you go for these weddings you say okay come and see me in my hotel let's hang out come and, and we got to this hotel it was in chelsea it was in central london so you just assume because you think it's like nigeria and ikoi you won't find no all these are broad places it's different things happen differently there we got there and it was almost like even though we were wearing shoes we almost felt like we should have something to cover the bottom of our shoes because just stepping there just being there ah in fact she had to stay there though because uh, she was also a bit stubborn she stayed there for the <laughs> for the duration of the festivities but ah she complained bitterly so why am i sharing that with you assuming that the way things work in your home market is the way it will work in these markets is the biggest mistakes you can make ask questions make no assumptions even if you've been vacationing and traveling to those areas for many years buying and investing in a market is a whole new ball game point two is explore your financing options in the west like in the uk and the us you have the options of taking long tenant mortgages 15 years 20 years 30 years i hear in the uk they even have a 50 year mortgage i think i heard they have a 100 year mortgage so with that mortgage you'll be passing it down to your generations <laughs> that i'm not advocating that you take a 50 year or a 100 year mortgage that actually isn't my point but my point is that you have financing options you can use debt to get on the property ladder and because depending on where you buy in the uk or in the us properties have a tendency to appreciate especially if you've selected in good areas it's not automatic and not all areas appreciate but you have that option that's different from the nigerian market where you do have access to mortgages but they're very short tenured five years sometimes if you're lucky maybe i think five years is the most i've had i've not even heard of a 10-year mortgage and the interest rates are astronomically high. Whereas in the UK and the US, the interest rates rarely break 5%. You can sometimes find them for as low as 2%. And depending on you know your history with the bank and the asset you want to buy and the assets you already own, they can even do better on the interest rates for you. And then what of course is going on with you know their central banks and what they are saying about interest rates or interest hikes and not. Now, why do I say this? When you get to these markets, you need to explore. Do you have a good credit score? Do you have what it takes to get pre-qualified? Some markets will require you to put down, if you're coming and you don't have any of those things, so maybe put down a greater deposit, maybe up to 30%, 20%. Some, if you've been traveling in and out and you have a little bit of a credit history, they will look at that and they're based on that. Sometimes if you've already, for instance, you have someone who's willing to co-sign the loan with you that also can help you to get a really good interest rate so there are so many options in terms of getting pre-qualified and why is this important if all you have for instance is a hundred thousand dollars and you realize you need to put down a deposit of 30 percent it means the most you can spend on a house is going to be about three hundred thousand but if you know that oh you can be pre-qualified and get a loan that will take you up to maybe because of your credit history, you only have to put down a deposit of 5%. You can still use that hundred thousand, but now you can buy multiples a property. That's multiples of that, or maybe multiple properties. So you can say, okay, I'm just going to use $10,000 now or 15,000 or $20,000 now and buy a property that will give me that at 5% at 5% as a deposit. 
and then with time i can say okay maybe i'll wait another six months if there's another opportunity i can still use the cash i have left for something else another property so it, it determines whether you'll be able to buy maybe one property at a certain valuation versus maybe two or three so these are so many of the options it's important for you to understand the options it also lets you know what kind of area code you can live in what kind of area in which you can afford to buy a home if you're going to do renovations on the home it allows you to think about all those kinds of things when you're choosing and searching for a home it's important to be armed with that information before you start looking for a home because it will be heartbreaking for you to find the property that you want to invest in and for some reason you can't afford to buy it so understand what your exposure is what leverage you have access to before you start the search now that brings us to point three start the search start looking for that home you're just going to love or that property that you're going to love because it's making good money for you so sometimes understand you know the the point first point if it's a commercial investment it's not about necessarily being in love with the property and feeling like oh this is a place we could live it could just be about i want to love the money this property is going to make for me and it's in the right location and it's it's providing the right kind of service and it's in demand and it will have a low occupation i mean um, a low vacancy rate so those are the things you want to look for get out there and look and when you start looking for this property please i advise you work with an agent yes use the webs websites there are a lot of real estate websites in both countries that you can have access to zillow is one in the u.s but definitely also work with a real estate agent because sometimes there are listings that never make it to those websites especially if you're targeting a few specific areas that you will have access to only through an agent. So you definitely want to look at the websites, you definitely want to talk to an agent, you definitely want to talk to friends and people in the area who might know that assets and properties are coming on the market for sale. Point four, so this is the fourth step. When you find the property that you want to go ahead with, then you need to make an offer. And most importantly, your offer should be contingent on you getting an inspection. So you're making this offer with the belief that certain things are in good order. And the home owner who's selling or the property owner who's selling the property to you should declare if there are any defects that would be material to you rejecting or altering your offer. So if they've not done that, that's why it's important that whatever offer you make is contingent upon it passing a successful inspection and i have a story about this i remember a few years ago i had an aunt that wanted to buy a home in the u.s so she has been vacationing there for years and she wanted to get a bigger home because she has lots of grandchildren and so she wanted a place that had rooms and spaces and it was beautiful so i went with her on all these house tours to find this beautiful home and we found this gorgeous property it had this massive basement lots of rooms white carpeting beautiful detailing and i remember the basement they would get in the cell it was the basement they had used like the central part of the basement even though it had rooms off it as like a games room and so she just loved that concept she could just imagine the summers and the christmases when family would come together there was a snooker table there was a little table tennis table there was a game there's a lot of gaming activities there for a lot of family interaction and she loved the home she put in an offer but of course, she took my advice and made sure that it was contingent on her getting inspection. Well, it turned out the house had one, a flooding issue, and it had high levels, extraordinary high levels of radon. So of course, she didn't buy the home. So it's really important, but imagine if she hadn't, and because she knew she was away, she would leave the property vacant for most of the time during the year, that flooding issue was gonna be a really big problem for her because she could be gone for two, three months and she'd come back and find that water or snow and things had been flooding into the basement and it would be the carpeting, it would be damp, it would be gross. So she couldn't afford to invest in a property that required that much maintenance. So because she got an inspection, it saved her. I mean, she had to pay about $400 for the inspection, but it saved her from investing hundreds of thousands of dollars in a property that ultimately would not have served her. So when you make an offer, that inspection stage is so essential when you're buying a home. Don't take it for granted. Don't say it doesn't matter. I know people don't inspect as strongly and have higher professional inspectors in in Nigeria, some do when they're buying homes that have been pre-built, but a lot of people don't. 
don't make that mistake in the west because once you've bought it you that's it you're done you have to live with it and those expenses and to correct the issue can be a really really difficult thing to deal with and really expensive too now step five this is where you apply for your loan so you've been pre-approved for their loan if you have one and you now apply for your loan so once the seller accepts your final offer and you've done your inspection and you're good to go please make sure that this is the stage in which you apply for your loan and then you know the bank will also usually give you a period of time if it's 15 days if it's 30 days the period of time it will take for them to approve the loan and release the money potentially to the seller so the seller will now take the house off the market waiting for your loan so they can get access to their home and they usually use that time also it gives them some time to begin to pack and move and uh, make your house vacant for you step six processing and final approval there's a lot of paperwork that needs to happen when you buy a home especially in the u.s and the uk so the house needs to be appraised you need to do you need to verify the title needs to be re-verified the taxes that may need to be paid you know duty stamp duty all those things the loan that's underwritten, insurance that needs to be taken against the title and the property, and all these documents are what they refer to as closing documents. So your real estate agent, this is where an agent will really help. That's why I said you really want to work on this with an agent. The real estate agent will help you with the closing of this. Now remember, the seller probably will have an agent. It's really important for your purpose and your interest that you also have an agent so that you have someone who's in the transaction because you've not done this before and it's not your full-time job even if you've done it a couple of times who is there to look out for your best interest as the buyer they will help you see you through and yes you'll have to pay a specific com commission a percentage for this which varies from state to state and country to country but it is money well spent so ensure that step seven is when you deal sorry step six is when you deal with receiving all your closing documents and that brings us to the final step which is step seven and in step seven that's where you do your final inspection your closing and funding so usually on closing day both of you will come to the, the office of the, of the um, real estate agent and that's where if you have a draft you hand over your draft if it's a transfer, you'll call the bank and everyone sits there and then the keys are handed over. And once all the documents are signed by both parties, guess what? You're now a homeowner. Congratulations. So that step is so very essential. There'll be IDs, they'll verify the ownership's ID, you know, the person who's there to represent the owner. They'll verify that you are there representing the new owner, your IDs, all of that. And you know, Usually there's a little bit of champagne or wine, you know, tick tink, and you've gotten your new property. So these are some of the essential seven steps. Please pay attention to the steps. They're very important. Don't get the keys unless you have all the home ownership documents, all the title documents verified, checked out by a title company. It's really, really important. There's situations where people think they've bought a home and then, you know, six months later, there's a knock on the door, knock, knock and the real owners show up or there's so many other issues so these are some of all these steps take go through them again reflect on them and when it's time for you if that's what you're up to now i wish you the very best of luck so as i always say as i'm coming to the end of this video please like this video make sure you subscribe and share it with that's right seven people as i always say be humble and learn bye for now